Hi, my name is Shai Schmelzer. Welcome to this demo of doing continuous integration and continuous deployment for visual applications with Oracle Visual Builder Studio. In this demonstration, we're going to show you two of the tasks that you can use to package and deploy your visual applications. The first is the package step, allowing you to take your application, optimize it, and get it ready for deployment. Then we'll show you how to use the deploy task to deploy your application to a visual builder instance. Then we're going to show you how you can also use Gigant tasks and scripts to automate the same process from command line. So when you are working in Visual Builder Studio and you upload an application and create a workspace for your application in the designer, you're going to get in the build area two jobs, a package job and a deploy job. Those are basically automating the CI CD for you. You can look into them to find out how they're built. Let's show you how to build those same jobs manually. So the first thing you would need is you would need an environment which points to an instance of Visual Builder into which you're going to deploy your application. In my case, I have a Visual Builder instance over here. Okay, and right now you can see all the deployments that are done on that one. And right now, there are no deployments over there. So once I have an environment defined, I can go over and define a new pipeline to package my application, then deploy it. So let's call this one the shape package job. We're going to use the default VM for building with Visual Builder. We're going to hook our job to the Git repository in which our application sits. And we can again automatically invoke it whenever there is a change there. I'm going to keep this empty for now. And then the step we're going to do here is a very simple visual application step called package. And it's already set up for us with the defaults that we want. It's going to optimize the application and create two files called build source and build a built assets zip. Those are the files that are actually going to get deployed. What we need to do next is after the build, we want to keep those zip files around. So let's do um, artifact archival. Okay. And we're going to keep everything that is in the build directory with the zip extension. Let's save this and execute this build. And the build finished successfully. If we look in the artifact area, we'll find the build directory with the two zip files in here. We can actually take those and use them to deploy in other places. Okay. And if you look at the actual log of the run over here, you would see exactly what we did. We did access to the Git repository over here. And then we used a um, grant command to execute a VB process local task. Okay. And we're going to show you that you can also do this from a command line. But this basically went over with a bunch of parameters, optimized our application, and created the zip file at the end of the day um, that were archived. So now we have our packaged part. The next thing we want to do is build a job that actually deploys our application. And so now let's get a job that will deploy. So we'll call this one the shy deploy. And we can, for example, deploy in a stage mode. Again, we're going to use the same VM. This time we're not using the git as the source of file, but rather in the before build, we're going to use the copy artifact to copy the results of the shy package. Okay, so it's gonna copy the same build files over. And then in the step, we're going to use the Oracle deployment step. Over here, you'll get a list of all the environments you have mapped. So right now we only have one. Then you can specify how to connect to it, either with an access token or with your credentials. You can use the uh, default location of the files because those are the default names. 
This indicates whether you want your application to be stage, which is when this is checked, or published when this is unchecked. So let's keep it checked right now. You can specify a profile um, for your connections to the backend, and you can specify what to do with the database, keep the existing environment data, or clean the database. I'll save this one, and then we'll execute it. Right, so it's executed successfully. Let's look at the log. Okay, so it went Toby over and copied the zip files. Okay, and then went over and did the deployment step over here, resulting in an application that is deployed in this location. So if we actually go over here, and um, this is the same instance that we're seeing here. If I do a refresh here, first of all you would see here's the new application, it's staged, and if you go over and invoke it from here, this would be the staged application running. All right, so we saw how to do this using the built-in functionality. One more thing to define here is a pipeline. You might want to create a pipeline that connects your jobs together, And this is very easy. You can simply take package step, then the deploy step, and you can tie them together to run one after the other. Now we can simply run the pipeline and do both steps in one go because it's marked as auto start. It would also automatically start if you run the package, the deploy step would automatically execute. All right, one more thing I wanted to show you is that I did this using the declarative approach, but you can also do the same steps using a manual approach, and you can actually use the um, grant commands that Visual Builder provides to execute this package and deploy. We have new grant commands available today. If you go over and you look at the documentation for Visual Builder Studio, you would find in section nine over here, the grant um, commands that you can use, okay? So we're actually using two grant commands. Uh, so the first grant command we're using is process local, basically taking the files and packaging them, that's done by process local over here. And then the next command would be a VB deploy, which takes your application and deploys it. It gets a bunch of parameters, and some of them have default. For example, the default for publish is false, which create a staged application. Similarly, uh, for the schema, it defaults to new, but you can override it. So if you want to build your application and deploy it from command line, you simply use those utilities. I can, again, do it from a build inside Visual Builder Studio. So over here, I have a build that is again configured to go to the same Git repository, okay? Um, I have a parameter here called pass, which is the password for my user. I don't have any before build, and in the step, I'm doing an NPM install. This is going to pick up the libraries based on the definition in our, in our Git repository that we checked out. It's gonna install what we need, then we're using a grant command to do the VB process local execution with a bunch of parameters over here. And then we're using the uh, grant VB deploy to take and deploy it to another instance of our application, okay? Again, with the username and the password that we're passing is um, the parameter over here. So now let's run this build. So this one actually goes over to this URL, so let me show you this URL over here. Okay. So right now you can see there is no AMP application. If we'll switch back to our build job and run it.
as it runs, we can look into the log files and see what is being done. So we're starting by going over to the Git, fetching our repository, okay, and then doing the npm install command to install anything that we need for this project. Once the npm install is done, we're using again over here the process local to process the files and create our optimized um, versions of zip files. And then we're running the VB deploy to deploy to our instance. And again, we can see the application finished deployment successfully. We have the URL over here. And if we go over here and reload the page, we'll see the AMP application that was just staged for us um, by our build process. Same application deployed on a different instance using command line.